Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this panel. My name is Ranka Primarats. I teach English at the University of Southampton here in the UK, and it's a huge privilege to have been invited to chair this panel on, on the worlding of African poetry, really, we could say. Um, because I've been thinking, I've been, as I've been listening to this conference here today, that in my own discipline, which is the academic study of literature, there is a new paradigm that is currently rising, coming to the forefront, and that's the paradigm of world literature, so that we no longer necessarily, for, for quite a while now, we haven't been speaking of African literature in terms of Commonwealth, okay, so that's, that's long gone. Um, we are all familiar with the word post-colonial, uh, which is a very good and useful wor word, but we, we are increasingly talking about global market, the global marketplace, global economic flows, global cultural flows, and, and those people who met at Makerere in 1962, um, according to that logic, were probably the first, that was probably the first conference of African literature as world literature, so they're way ahead of their time in ways that they couldn't have been aware of when they were meeting and discussing what it means to be an African writer and to be an African writer in the world. So um, it's a great pleasure to welcome practitioners and translators here with me this evening of African poetry in the world, um, however you understand African poetry and the world. Um, we have heard earlier this, th today that unfortunately fortunately, the Somali poet Ved Same couldn't, couldn't make it today because he couldn't get a visa. But we have Dr. Martin Orwin here with us to, um, the, uh, on the panel who will say a little bit more about his poetry. Are you going to read any of it in the original? And read, he'll, he'll read the Galileo, the poem, uh, Catastrophe that the poet himself was originally meant to have read. Um, and then we have Erika Yanis of the Poetry Translation Center who read it in translation. I've got that right. Okay. Um, after them, we will have Ida Hadjivayanis um, who will read a poem by Alamin Mazrui called Niguse in Swahili. Um, who, hope I'm pronouncing all these words approximately okay. Uh, Ida is an expert in Swahili language and literature. Delightfully, she has translated Alice in Wonderland into Swahili. I'd love to ask you about that if we have time about the problems and challenges of, and the enjoyments of, of doing that. And finally, last but very much not least, we have on my left, Professor Adukwe Okai, who is truly a man of an African man of the world. His um, life's journey has taken him from all the way from Moscow to Ghana, to the UK, to America. He has performed his poetry as his bio tells us that we've been given with some of the leading poets of the world. He's a member of the Royal Society of Arts and the president of the Pan-African Writers Association, or POWER as the acronym has it. And he will read the poet's poem, The Bond Oath of Ubuntu, in English, to close this panel. We will go, go in the order that is advertised um, in the program. So, Right, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, hello again. And <clears throat> I'm going to start off just with a, a, some words of introduction. And I'm actually going to take a few steps back. Uh, Wambui asked us to remember people who are important in our lives. And one very, very important person came to mind when I was sitting down there, um, in addition to Hussein Tanzania, who I did mention there. But I thought I would just leave it and actually mention him here now, uh, because there are a couple of very important connections. And that man is Mohammed Hashidama Garriya. Uh, I don't know if anyone's heard of Garriya. He's one of the, the most important poets um, in Somali um, of the 20th century. Uh, he was also the man who first worked out how the metrical system of the poetry works. And he was a teacher. And he was also a mentor to Hassan Daher Smit al Wersame, the poet who uh, we're going to read today. And he was a mentor to me personally. I, a lot of my research, I'm fascinated by the meter of Somali poetry and how, how poetry is crafted generally. And I was saying before how I learned, I've learned everything in a sense from people. I've learned more from him than any other single person, probably more than, from him than 
many other people combined. He was an absolutely wonderful man. And he was a great teacher. And he was one of the first teachers of Somali literature, Borame, at Amud University. After that was first set up in 91, although they didn't start teaching then until later, and in Hargeisa University. And Hassan Dahsmi al Sami, the poet who we're going to read the poem of today, was taught by Gardia, and he's now taken over teaching literature in Hargeisa <coughs> University, at the now what's wonderfully called the, in, the Institute for Somali Language and the Gardia Institute for Somali Language and Literature Studies. Uh, which another friend of mine, Abdurrahman, uh, Abdurrahman Farah Guri Barwako, has, has set up there. And it was literally on this stage in 2006 that Garia first read his poems in English, I don't know if any, in, in Somali, and we read translations through the Poetry Translation Center. I don't know if anyone here was there that evening. It was a winter jigger with you. Do you remember? <laughs> he was only short. And there was another Somali man who was literally one of the tallest men in the world at the visit. He's like seven foot tall, and they were both on stage, and Garia was a wonderful performer. So I just wanted to, I mean, thank you, Wambui, for, in a sense, introducing that um, uh, to us, but I wanted to just say a few more words about Garia and the importance of him to, to me personally, and also to Wad Sameh, and indeed others. <clears throat> so Hassan Dahir, Ismail Wad Sameh, he's, he's at the moment, he's in Ad Sababa. We, he, he lives in Hargeisa, <coughs> Somaliland. He had to go to Addis to try and get a visa. Uh, the British Embassy refused him a visa, along with some other Somali artists who were meant to come for the Somali Week Festival here in London. But he's here with us in spirit. And I've been reading this poem and others on his behalf. He's perfectly happy for me to do that. And I've been in regular contact with him, phoning up and saying it all went fine. And he's seen it on YouTube or Facebook and all this. Uh, social media things, and he was very pleased with the event we had on Monday down in, in East London. So, um, now this poem is called Galilio. It's translated as catastrophe, but the word has much more sort of a sense of, uh, in some way, murugo. It's a, a sort of feeling, uh, but it was felt that the catastrophe was a better sort of um, title in, in the English. And I um, started working on this. This is one of his major poems. And it has to do with the migration. So it's the, uh, in the poem, what he does is addresses the sea. Because, as we all know, many people are dying in the Mediterranean. And so he addresses the sea as this villain in this, the story of people migrating. But the sea then turns back and says, well, hang on. Just look to yourselves. Am I to blame? And uh, you'll hear it in the translation, which Eric is going to read. Um, but it's, it's this sort of dialogue between the sea and the poet. And then the poet then turns to the people and speaks to the people directly. The translation process has first started working on this um, sort of some time ago and sort of started doing a bit of translation on it. And I just should mention some people who helped me with that. Uh, there was Saeed Jamal Hussain, who... And, um, must have been about three years ago now, actually sort of first, was it four? Good grief. Um, four years ago sort of first uh, helped me to understand some bits and pieces. And um, also Werd Samir himself, the poet, uh, working with him in, in Hargeisa. I was also Skyping all the with Mohammed uh, Ahmed, who's a, a runner in Canada. He's the sort of Mo Farah of Canada. But he's interested in Somali poetry. He's Somali, like, like Mohammed, Mo Farah is. And, um, and we were sort of discussing this poem, and he'd actually done his own translation, and, and we discussed things uh, in relation to it. So um, I think that's um, all I'm going to do as means of introduction. I'm now going to read the poetry in Somali on behalf of Word Summit. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, Eric is going to say a few words about the Poetry Translation Center, and uh, because the other person involved in the translation was Daljit Nagra. And uh, some people will have heard of him uh, as a poet in, in Britain. So I wrote the translation and worked with him, and we made the translation that was uh, then printed finally in the, um, in the Poetry Translation Centre um, uh, poster. So, yes. Thanks, Martin. I just wanted to say a few words of introduction so we didn't interrupt the poem in between the Somali and the English. Um, good evening, my name is Erica Yanis. I'm the Managing Director of the Poetry Translation Centre, um, which is a charity based here in London, but it was actually born here at SOAS um, in 2004, I think, and it came out of a series of translation workshops 
that uh, the English poet Sarah Maguire put together with members of various faculties and um, I imagine that time of being a kind of exciting period where people would come together with their different languages and collaboratively make new translations of contemporary poets who were really important poets but not very well or often translated into English. So making new work available but having a wonderful time at the same time. Um, the translation workshops uh, were all about collaboration and everything that the Poetry Translation Centre has done in the last 12 years has been using that approach to make translations. Um, Martin mentioned that there were many, many people involved with the translation of Galileo, which we're about to read. Um, the English poet Daljit Nagra, who, is the, um, who, who was the sort of poet part of that collaboration, has Bengali heritage, and he said that reading the poem, which is about migration, brought to him a lot of um, memories and echoes from his own family's migration. So there are stories that we share across cultures. Um, respect and curiosity and consent are really at the heart of this whole endeavor. Um, we really believe that poetry is a meeting place and that translation in turn is the lifeblood of poetry. It's, um, it's a really great honor to be here at the conference. Thank you very much for some very stimulating talks. Um, if you would like to hear a little bit more about the Poetry Translation Center and about this this poster of Galileo Catastrophe by Wed Summer. Um, the Poetry Translation Center has a website. It's very easy to find online. And um, I'll be around afterwards to talk a little bit more about our work as well. So I think we're now going to hear the Somali original of Galileo. And then I will read the translation by Daljit Nagra and Martin Owen. So it's Galileo by Hassan Dahi, Ismail Wed Summer. If Kay Gogoshi so haute, Ogo Galab Nova Warshil, Maoga Talidi Ugo State, Maoga Gurige Fure so Galileada Mogdan Besa Naftana Hungaragat Kara, Aquia de Maaku Gura, Hadana Gulu Tiolor Kera, Gifki or Eltio Hankera, Ogo Garasha Ukolan. What can a Gamaski ma issue? Gashan Alia Mabacho, Isha give a dead Madaho. Kofna ba gabal ki mawaro, wahan hubo geri kude. Taniyo ane go gur gurtha, elaman to garlei, war geri awi qoma, gedafu wa alham barsan dig taylo mahig dunti. Intan ta began la waie, mahan murgar la gohe, barbarti ega gabloche, kuang gur hiyad ubale, markhan gudub to da radche, gunadi ail gadore, niyan go ashar ku qomi. But Golio Ganka Hat, Mian Go Die Go Had She, Garte the Mian Belavi. Had that Mahasteda Go Badia He, Kaga Go Ban Wade, Inad Bermagade the Day, the Sida Ugasha Garmaha. A Layla He Wad Gumudi, Geshan Kugule Kana, Garkado Hasogignane. Elehna Rahakuge, Adagar Maho Bahaga, Hawenki or Garideda, Kugas Ramelgo Dona. Good dog Galapta Abadso, Biuhu Gororo Kugauche, Gawan no Melgarona, Dul Gedigu Galap Arabo. In Taigur de Giglese, Hirkio Dob Tegara de Wahaitiri, Guru Gagu, Gafio Wa Igu Gedafo. Magayo good of Tadi Sarti, away to the Ad Gane, so me and Galab Sede, Balcazo Ado Gayiga Gulito, Hadu Sahankago Gabsho, Hadu Samarcago Guru, Kane Atkona Gabnovo, Custo Kugugela Mesa, Garad Herla Casedo, me and Gera the Shinke, the Horted Gedu Gugainin Habla Haguda Eta Rive, Hirga Tamaya Ilay. Gede Oskadan away, Marki Galbachin way, Sharit Kumuga Sinte into Saharu Donche, Halye Lagugir Te Fini, Inte Hapsiga Lugume, Gashan Timu Wada Koresha, Inte Gule Tiscade, Rakdi Si Had Kugohe, Lashi Gul Hukusi, Dugagum Hukusi, Marku Hurigo Gidomi, Marke Goglenid Barbartu. Kalun kumiu galilio el mada il gabah kasiye. 
تيو حيب حقشو دا ميد كيني قلن قلعوبي ميد قرن ويلي كادسو حسوقة تحريب قو قيستو قو ماديو قيري فولحن هو يوين كوير كغوستي شل كاني كو قو قاف وريغي وحوم بالاقا قنتايا ميايدان كبقب كباب قبوبن قو قو دا ايو قدو دي قد قو دي سو قلب عرابي مركي قلو قيو جوك ليدو كيو سان قلقا كينتا ميان قرشدو ديغين اندسادا قبلادا كو قيجي Geliyo geslay loo daada halki gal miyo du gagla gal galin gaw sa hun gaysa miyan gara shadu digaynin inad wa bari ka gurto. Ado guri gagi ibshi haddaad gaban kina waydo ado gaba gaba wiyala haddaad dila da guddoonto wad kaad gini sisa taaye haddaad gari da la chaarto haddu maal ka gugu goyo intu aad migu ka gigay kulay wal galab sigaaye mahaad gu ashada katoosin. گر وقت سری، این انتراری، گدون حال ایری بر خدا، سری دادو میگو دینه، بر بارتون میگو دینه، بدوی نسکو مگو رینه، حل بانگو بن کارو دیب تی، حل موگر نایتین له، حق موگو دن آد سوگی سی، حل کادو گلید مگینن، هیان کیو گیدی گاگ گو با بنو کسه دینو گلاب نول تباه، گوگل کنفت ها کو آگان. دالان کنی سی گرمایا هنگال گه ود گومیستی بو گونایی ری مگادت حال کو آدمی و اجوری رجاد قبل با کسران چون تن اول گه گو ادونشی قبل نت های باس قیسی گو فعال گو فروری کل سونه را گه بگ بیسی قف بات های گول بورا قف بات های گری اجلالا قف بات های گارهانتا کجاتشو به حس کن. جن كاكو مدير عارو أقون تادونا مقابنا مقاقحن آية هاقو داد كادو غب داد كاكو ناكو مقريفن دال كاكن كماكو إيسد قال بيد يوروب كو ما يارن قريقو ناكو ما باهنا قباتا هاي موغن تيدا عديقا قيقا قو واكن قرقارا فاري كهوتي كو إيق قبر قال هورا تادا و فيرسو بالغونيا هاقا قدا شادنا بالدهو دالان با کوگو گدامن گدار را در حنت چیف گرد کجا اوهیلا قبیا کوگو گاف و رئیسان هرتان عیدگو فینن هل با گود کجا سران کوین گوسو رقاشی و محسنتی The mat on which life lies is hard. Beware, each day we stumble. The one who's unaware doesn't know what door a decision will open, nor the anguish which can follow. Hunger leads a person by the chin, then grubby greed rides it. So again, beware, good sense is harnessed to blame, to guilt and shame and all their rot. The spear of death doesn't miss its target or linger for the blink of an eye. No shield repels it. No one outlasts their life. So I am certain of one thing, death. From crawling baby to bearded man, bad news disturbed me, loaded with disaster. I felt for the strong ones lost. I groaned with grief for the young, those who had no milk. I sickened for them and wept. Inflamed by the scab of resentment, I chased the scourge with blood on its hands. Was I deranged by the memories? I stood on the coast and threatened, accused the booming ocean. See, you didn't prevent the slaughter of the weak. It's criminal the way you treated the people shielded by law. By God, you've sunk low. The reparation you owe is clear. Admit it, don't stay silent. God will send you to the fires of hell. It's you who tore at my people, the fine women and men injured in a desolate place. Be drained each day, be empty. May you dry up drop by drop, become a drought-ridden open desert that in the evening the nomads will walk over. I had spoken. The sea roared and rumbled. It rolled its waves and churned its foam, then said, 
Your poem is a travesty. I don't deserve the guilt you hurl, the curse you cast. Is this my due? Just hold on. Your leaders are lacking. Your country grows weak. Your patience is lost, your smiles fade. Your understanding sleeps that would have tackled the despair that seeps inside you and steers the journey to the hour of your death. A wave crept up towards the girls as they were trafficked in darkness. It tore them apart. They had no tree to cling to, and predators reveled when no friend was there to save them. All those the Sahara cut off, good men proclaimed as heroes, how many were left wretched in jail? How many virtuous women failed to reach their potential? Vultures cawed over the carrion of each corpse. Wild beasts clawed the offspring given you by God. <coughs> when the boat was overturned, the young were scattered along the shore. Did the fish in anguish not weep tears of festering anger? Are you unaware of your dead amassed from coast to coast? Just look. The slaughtering migration, the massacre and ugly death, the mothers draped in mourning cloth for a blunder which comes around again. What binds you to it all? When the bustard calls out from the bush to warn of the heavy spring showers, the gales and afternoon downpours, are you not grown up enough to know to tighten the roof mat on the frame of your hut? Doesn't common sense tell you to leave at dawn the place where the jaws of your cattle and camels have nothing to chew, where ticks and carnivores threaten? If you've sold your goods and your house, if all your children are gone, if you stagger at the brink after hearing terrible news and offer your final shilling to death who you make your neighbour, if all your wealth has bought only that which humans despise, why lament the fate of loved ones? It's what you deserve. It had spoken and I replied, See, I hear you. I admit I've gone too far. Accept my apology. To the people I say, Prosperity should not have vanished. The young should not have perished, not thrown themselves on the ocean. Duty didn't burn in the spirit of him you handed it to. He had no plan for the future, didn't uphold the justice you were expecting. He slept. He didn't speak out each day as he should to inspire the camel trek to the destination you gathered for. Menace surrounds you, your children die, all their dreams are crushed. Colonial powers wrote in books that you wouldn't reach the place to which humanity aspires. A skin now covers hope. Truth has been cut away and you're told you're worthless. All this overwhelms you and splits apart your sinking confidence. You are people who can build a home. You are people in your own right. Leave behind the false hunger and look to your success. You're not any less by even a spear tip than your peers elsewhere. Your intellect is strong. Your future is bright. Your people need you. Your country has not cut you off. Western Europe hasn't called you. The Greeks don't need you. Where is your self-respect? Your place is here. Life got out of hand, but look to what's ahead of you. Take in what's by your side. Turn around and see the children clumped together in the cold, sleeping by the walls. Only your effort can help them. A shattered world surrounds you that no one has yet made whole. The responsibility rests on you, more pressing than cut and run. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Dr. Ida Hadjibayanis. Hi, so this will be quite short. You'll be happy to hear. Um, I'm reading a poem called Niguse by uh, Alamin Mazrui, Professor Alamin Mazrui. Um, so Alamin Mazrui was born in 1948 in Lamu. Uh, an island off the Kenyan coast. And um, he was born into the very famous Mazrui family clan that uh, some of you probably know. And uh, in the 1980s, he was detained, as were a number of other intellectuals uh, who were regarded as critical by the government of Daniel Arab Moy of Kenya. So after his release in 1984, 
He went into exile in the US. And uh, in 1988, he published his very first and only uh, poem collection, which is called Chembe Chamoyo, that is a grain of the heart. And this is one of the poems in there. It's called Niguse. So I'll read it in Swahili and then in English, because it's very short. We'll take five, five minutes, two. Okay. <clears throat> Niguse. Everybody has a, a copy somewhere, yeah? so you, you could follow me if you want to. Um, Nitokapo kizuizuni, sorry. Nitokapo kizuizini, nitamomba yeyote mwendani, aniguse, taratibu, pole pole, lakini kwa yakini. Niguse tena, unijuze tena, unifunze tena, maisha ya livyo, maisha ya unjavyo, ladha yake ilivyo. Nipo hapa nimekukabili. Niguse tena tafadhali. Niguse, niguse. So the English is, when I am released, I'll ask anyone who is close to me, or this can be who is a loved one, to touch me delicately, sensitively, but truly. Touch me again. Make me know again how life is, how life tastes, what life tastes like. I'm right here in front of you. Touch me again, please. Touch me, touch me. Thank you. Professor Okan. Yeah, <clears throat> when we talk of the Makariri Conference on African literature, we are talking about beginnings. And so I've decided to perform this poem, which is also about beginnings. In fact, President Clinton visited Ghana. Who remembers the year in which he did that? Nineteen, it is something. <laughs> Do you remember? Okay. I can't remember the particular year, but we attended a conference on African literature writers and publishers in Arusha. And our hotel was in the safari <coughs> area. In the morning, we saw the animals, the elephants, the monkeys. And I suddenly recollected that the first footprint of man on earth was in that part of Africa that inspired this poem. And on my way out of the place, we first went by a bus, perhaps to catch the flight in Nairobi. I started a poem on the, on, on the bus. And by the time I got to Ghana, I finished the piece. It is called the Bond Oath of Ubuntu. Ubuntu, we all know, is a South African, Southern African concept which says, I am because you are. There is a term here which is um, the Battle of Adwa. The Ethiopian army over a hundred years ago defeated the Italian army. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the wealth thy hands have made, 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy paths throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my God, oh, how to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. The number you are calling is not in service at this time. <laughs> the number you are calling is not in service at this time. The number you are calling is not in service at this time. Don't you give me that jazz. I know there are people at the other end. Don't ask my dreams to convey contraband cargoes into the Saharas of some unlisted Mongolia. Oh, I can clearly hear my very beginnings humming like a Papua New Guinea peacock on heat. In the archipelagos of the ages, I must excavate in me the embargoed plateau zones of a vision-friendly utopia, the legend of the Battle of Adwa, the song, the totem, and the assegai. Within the silently seething, digitized intestines of prehistoric Tanzania, my soul's cosmic umbilical cord, like a blanket clad Stone Age refugee, anticipating a passport and a visa, awaits the connection with Ethiopia, with Alexandria. I must link myself with another. I must link myself with another within the oasis compound of the awakened. The Lalibela temple stands sentry over the shimmering threshold of the 21st century. The Millennium New calculates the Timbuktuian Tutankhamenic spiritostratospheric physics of her majestic entry. Upon the table mountain, inscribed on the other side of the Rosetta Stone, the classified spiritual inventory of man, woman, and humanity. Out of the moon massaging mouth of the monumental midnight main song of Marrakesh, and the long, long Shokoto Sudanese Horns of Sergena Truth, rivaling the eternity teasing Nefertiti neck, from within the savannah seducing until saluting vocal chords of the Kalahari xylophone, from within the Kula North custodian calabash of the Kora of Mount Kilimanjaro, from inside the forest diviner death of the Bintingo Bonu drums of Manchetakitaywa and Shaka the Zulu, and the Belafon of the Futajalon and River Congo. The earth of Fiana Ranswa pours out. The wind of the stone citadel of the great Zimbabwe pours out. The fire of Monobotapa pours out. Through the gurgling pharaonic Phantom from it wailing waters of the Victoria Falls, Abu Simbel, and Nakosombo. The transcendental Abyssinia Tanzania cradle chorus anthem. I testify to the coconut sap. I notify of the landmine and the gap. I am the soul. I am the goal. I am the footprint of man. I am the heart. I am the hope. 
I am the ancestral horoscope. I am the pathfinder's map. I am the blueprint of the air. I am the soul print of the sun. I am the blueprint of the gene. I am the umbilical cord to mankind. I am the compass finger to the millennium. I am the footprint of the world. I am the light. I am the future. I am that I am. I am Ubuntu. I am Ubuntu. I am Africa. On a bus. I wish I'd been on that bus. Um, these were wonderful. I, I know you'll agree with me. I didn't know there were so many ways, specific and different ways, for, for poetry to be wonderful. Uh, I'm sure you'll have questions. We have about 10 minutes. If, if nobody, if you need some time, oh, do we have one? While you are thinking about them, I wonder if I can I invite all of our speakers and translators to comment briefly on the form of their novels, on the formal properties of what they've just read. It's all very different. They have clearly very different organizing principles. So if you could say a few words about that and maybe the difficulties of translating that form into, into another language. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, right. Well, I can give a whole lecture on this, actually, if you want <laughs> The, no, no, uh, no, what no, can no, I say? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> no, no, I was joking. <laughs> I was only joking. No, um, <clears throat> okay, there's two things to listen out for in the Somali. I should maybe mention this. First of all, it's the meter, so it's metrical. Uh, the meter that he uses in this poem is one called Baradde. So it goes la 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 no, no but it's alliterative. Okay. You will have heard maybe something that sounds like rhyme. I didn't hear rhyme, but I was, yep. I was wondering if I was right. The thing is, it's, it's actually, <clears throat> what you get is a lot of syntactic parallelism, which then leads to what sounds like rhyme, but it's not, it doesn't, it's not rhyme as such. But what you do get is the, is the alliteration. Every word in this poem, if you heard it, began with a word with G. Every line. It's, sorry, every line, sorry. has a word beginning in G. So, if ke gogo shisu haute o go galab nova washil ma oge galagi ugo sti ma oge gurge fure so galili ada mogdan besa. And it runs through the whole thing. So, the alliteration is part of the grammar of Somali? Is the alliteration is part of, I mean, all Somali poetry is alliterative. So, uh, this a poem in this metre, there's, there's quite a number of different metres. According to the metre, you have um, one or two words that begin in the same sound. But it's the sound is carried through the whole poem. So that gut, 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 gut through every single line. And it has to be a noun or a verb or an adjective or an adverb. It can't, you can't use pronouns or grammatical particles. And you can't, you have to be careful, you can't just, people's ears are attuned to when people are struggling with that. And they maybe put a word in just for the sake of the alliteration. And you can't repeat words. So it's, um, to translate it, is yes. <laughs> so... Um, I'm not speaking as a translator, but uh, this PTC has published quite a lot of um, contemporary Somali poetry in translation. And as Martin says, every poem alliterates in a letter. But when you, when you replicate that in English, uh, unless you're very skilled, it can end up sounding forced because we're not used to seeing so much alliteration in English. Um, although kind of older English poem had, that has that feature. Um, one of the poets who we've translated is called Ashalul Muhammad Mohammed Yusuf, who's, um, who writes in Somali but has lived in the UK for 20 years, so she's a UK poet really. She's been translated by um, a poet called Claire Pollard, who has very successfully put the alliteration into her translations. If you ever get a chance to read some of hers, they're on our website, etc. You'll see every line with the same letter, and it, and it works. It's a sign of real skill when you can make that sound echo through the poem without it seeming like you've just sort of shoehorned it in. But I guess that's the same in Somali. It's the, the really skilled poets um, can do it, m making it seem effortless. Yeah, I think the thing is, what, what you have to sort of bear in mind is that to Somali ears, it's, it's natural. So this is the thing, it's not natural to our English ears when you hear it. And if there was one line missing it, it that would stand out hugely. And no, you just won't get a poet poem like this without with, with the missing the alliteration, a poet simply wouldn't do it. It's, uh, yeah. 
You know, I saw yours, uh, we all saw yours printed on, on, yes. on the so written paper. Probably my colleague Ale uh, Alena can tell you more about Swahili poetry more than I can. Um, the poem I, ch I chose is a uh, free verse. It's, it's a modern poem. It's called Shairi Laki Sasa. Uh, but Swahili has a long history of um, very rhymed and rhythmic uh, poetry. And in the 70s, we had a lot of um, arguments. We talked about this on Monday uh, at this talk, about how the poem I just read would have seen, seem as not real poetry because it does not have the rhythms and the meters and everything else. But uh, personally, I prefer these modern poems because I find that they, they carry the meaning more as opposed to the traditional uh, po poems. And uh, so yeah, there's no, that's just shady like it's that you have with you there. Prof, I didn't expect you to sing. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. How did you, tell us how you came to write it the way you did it and how you perform it when you do it. Ooh. <coughs> um, yeah, you've got time. Well, um, as I was saying, I was inspired by the environment and the fact that the first footprint of man was in Africa and in that area. So as soon as we got onto the bus, I started scribbling. And I think going over my papers, I will discover that that which I scribbled first became the last part. I scribbled it, it came, and so even it was an, an, an envelope, you know, that we just scribbled. And we continued, we continued, and I continued scribbling over all sort of papers. Then when we got to, when I got to Accra, I finalized that peace. And I asked for the time when, uh, to know when Bill Clinton visited Ghana, because I don't remember the date, but it was in that year that we heard that he was coming to visit Ghana to Africa, and Ghana was going to be the first stop, and that he was going to make a statement to Africa. Now, while in the midst of the creation, I decided that that piece was going to be Africa's message to the world. So that's how I went about the poem, confirming and affirming the primacy of the African footprint in the scheme of things. And it came out beautifully. There was a conference in, in Stockholm, World Culture Conference. And that was the first place where I gave the first world reading of this poem. Then, 1992 or three, yeah, Nadim Godima invited me to South Africa to attend her birthday celebration. And previously in 1991, Nelson Mandela had come to Ghana to say thank you. He said thank you to all through the world. And at a forum called Mandela Forum at the Accra International Conference Center, the the people outside were more than the people in the conference hall. And uh, it was broadcast live. After Mandela spoke, I was the only other person who spoke by performing a poem called Mandela the Spear, which I wrote on the night that he was released from prison. So when I visited uh, Adam Godiman, Immediately I got there around 5 p.m. She said, well, we've been invited to State House. 
So I was to escort her because her husband was very advanced in age. So we, a car came for us and we went to pick up the Mandela's lawyer who handled the Ribona trial. So we took him and we went to State House. It was a dinner in honor of the Chilean president. Now, around our table, we have also the, 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 the Deputy Foreign Minister of South Africa. When he discovered that I was a poet, he said, what? A poet like you, you are here, you are keeping quiet. Protocol. <laughs> After the next speaker, he goes. <laughs> what was I to do? I don't know my poems off by heart. Luckily, on that occasion, I took a poem and put it in my pocket. Because I've been embarrassed before. This poem. This poem. And it was this poem that I took it. So I proudly and happily got up and went to the podium. And I told Mr. Mandela that um, I had been sent from Ghana to come and take him back. <laughs> and that in honor of him, I'm going to have the opportunity to perform for him a second time. The first was when he came to Ghana, if you remember. This time, I'm giving him a, a different poem. The bundles of Ubuntu, after all, Ubuntu comes from Southern Africa. And so uh, I performed this poem and uh, it, it was quite interesting. And when I finished, I set about going to my, my, my table, not knowing I should have gone behind onto the days to shake their hands. So I shook their hands along the way in front of the table. And the next day was the birthday of Mandela's lawyer. So Madame and I, we went to the party. Madame, the, Madame uh, Nadim Godima. We went to George Bezos' home. And as we were driving, uh, Nadim Godima was driving. Then she said, oh, the president is coming, so let me put, put, pull my car aside. I thought it was the president of the law firm of George Bezos. Not knowing it was Mandela. So we, had, we, we got aside, he passed, and then we also came in and we all sat together. We sat at the same table with Mandela. And uh, so this is an interesting history to this poem, which really has been, I'm happy that I've been blessed to produce this poem for Africa. And we are really privileged to, to have had you. I hope somebody's recorded. <laughs> Our time is up. These poets and translators are hopefully going to stay around for a little longer if you want to get their autograph or talk to them some more. Uh, but now I believe we have to make space for the, for the closing of the conference. Thank you very much.